welcome to Sacred Heart Catholic Church. The Mass is offered for the eternal rest of Guadalupe Alvarez, requested by the Alvarez family. Our celebrant today is Father Bruce Burnett. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. Thank you. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, if only you would heed the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commandments and statutes that are written in this book of the law, when you return to the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. For this command that I enjoin on you today is not too mysterious and remote for you. It is not up in the sky that you should say, who will go up in the sky to get it for us and tell us of it, that we may carry it out. Nor is it across the sea that you should say, who will cross the sea to get it for us and tell us of it, that we may carry it out. No, it is something very near to you, already in your mouths and in your hearts. You have only to carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him. Making peace by the blood of his cross, through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, The one who treated him with mercy. 
Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. To really understand the gospel today, I need to give you some background. First, the Israelites of the Old Testament were surrounded by pagans who ruled by force without justice nor mercy. In the pagan world, you could kill a whole tribe if one of them merely insulted you. When God made a covenant with Abraham, he introduced the concept of justice into the Mosaic Law. The Mosaic Law was contained in the Torah, the first five books of the, Mosaic, of the Hebrew Bible. The book of Exodus reads, But if injury ensues, you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. The term the ancient Israelites used for this form of reciprocal justice is called talion and was meant to moderate vengeance, a radical departure from the pagan world. Now, for the Jewish people in Christ's time, strict adherence to this law was thought absolutely necessary for salvation. However, Mosaic law only applied to the Jews the chosen people. The command to love your neighbor appears only once in the Hebrew Bible. The book of Leviticus reads, Do not be vindictive or spiteful toward your own people. Love your neighbor that he is like yourself. This command only refers to your own people. It does not say anything about non-Jews and especially Samaritans. The hatred between Jews and Samaritans has a long history, going back to the 9th century BC, when the United Kingdom disintegrated into the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. The Israelites of the northern kingdom intermarried with their pagan neighbors and adopted pagan culture and religion, which eventually led to their destruction and exile by the Assyrians. Their descendants were called Samaritans. Samaritans were considered half-Jews, having intermarried with pagan Gentiles, so in the eyes of the Jews, they are no good. Canaanites, Samaritans, and Gentiles were lumped together and often referred to as dogs. At the same time, Samaritans hated the self-righteous Jews. When the Jews returned to Jerusalem and tried to rebuild the temple, the Samaritans would pour pig's blood in the temple area, which made the land unclean. The Jews would have to stop building until the temple area could be cleaned up again. Therefore, the Jews hated the Samaritans even more than the Roman conquerors. And this brings us to today's gospel. Last week, the 72 disciples, whom Jesus had instructed and sent out, had just returned from their mission and were overjoyed that even the demons are subject to us because of your name. So, a scholar of the law, probably incensed that these upstarts, who had no formal training, yet were having so much success, stands up to test Jesus. Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The scholar's question was a test to see how much Jesus knew Jewish law. But Jesus 
does not fall for the trap and responds with a question. What is written in the law? The scholar of the law correctly recites the essential Jewish prayer, the Shema, which means here in, Israel, in Hebrew, found in the book of Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus compliments the scholar, saying that he correctly recited the Shema. But the scholar, still trying to trap Jesus, asks, and who is my neighbor? And, and with that, he falls into Jesus' trap. Jesus uses the parable of the Good Samaritan to teach his listeners a lesson about mercy. The man beaten and left half dead by the robbers was purposely nondescript. His clothes were taken so you could not determine his nationality. He could have been anyone. The priest and the Levite represented the self-righteous Jews who were still loved, living under the strict legalism of Mosaic law. The priest went out of his way to avoid the man, probably because he didn't want to make himself ritually unclean by touching blood. Likewise, the Levite, an expert in the law, like the scholar, could have checked to see if the man was circumcised, a circumcised and therefore a Jew, but he passed by the opposite side of the road. The problem was that both the priest and the Levite felt that they were justified according to Mosaic law, believing that non-Jews did not deserve to be treated with compassion. And this is precisely why Jesus uses the hated Samaritan as the hero of the parable. In the fullness of time, the Son of God became incarnate of the Virgin Mary to restore us to the image of God, to save us from our sins, and to fulfill the law that had until then only been partially revealed. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Jesus came to establish a new covenant, where justice and mercy are the pillars of the kingdom of God. Mercy does not abolish the justice of the Mosaic law, but mercy goes beyond justice. Mercy completes the law, not just for the Jews, but for all peoples. The parable ends with Jesus asking the final question of the debate. Which of the three was neighbor of the robber's victim? The scholar names as neighbor the one who treated him with mercy. Notice that he did not even want to say Samaritan. We should ask ourselves the same question. Every time we get together as a family for dinner, every time we have lunch with colleagues at work, every time we gather after mass in the parking lot, and every time we get on the internet, recent numbers show that on average, people spend about 67 hours a month on the internet. And most of that time, we do not even know the identity of those with whom we are interacting. Jesus is telling us that all of these people are our neighbors. Based on what I say about others, or what I write on the internet, would Jesus number me with the priest and Levite? or with the Samaritan. Remember Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of these least brothers of mine, you did for me. 
and that includes gossip. Jesus, you gave us the commandment to love. Help me to fulfill your law by loving you with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind, and love my neighbor as myself. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, many parts of salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin through Mary, and became a man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. With confidence, we turn to God with our needs, to God who hears the cry of the poor. That leaders and followers in the church bear witness to love of neighbor, as did the Good Samaritan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders work toward peace and assist victims of war and strife. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That individuals and communities treat the earth gently and preserve its beauty of, and richness for future generations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people have access to affordable health care, education, and housing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all members of this church welcome the strangers, shelter the homeless, and build a community of love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Saving God, your mercy heals the wounds of the world. Hear and answer the prayers we offer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As the gifts are being prepared, please join us in singing hymn number 747, Where Charity and Love Prevail, number 747.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Dear Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world. You have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jacques, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the Eucharist, we want to try to keep him dry. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Thank you, Andy. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Please join us in hinging, singing hymn Christ. number 931, Beautiful Savior, number 931. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And please be seated for the announcement. Friday, July 15th and the 22nd, Deacon Paul Lacombe will give classes about how to grow in our faith at 8.30 a.m. in English and 7 p.m. in Spanish. All Fridays of the month of July will be altar server training at 7 p.m. On July the 23rd, between 12 p.m. through 3 p.m., the diocesan Tri triage ministry will present a program to help overcome evil influences. For more information, the flyer is inside the bulletin. And just a reminder that next Saturday is Missionary Saturday. So if you have any needs, please call the office and I definitely will be looking for volunteers for next Saturday. We'll begin at nine o'clock. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join us in our recessional hymn, number 642, To Jesus Christ, Our Sovereign King, number 642. Mm -hmm. 